Tell us a little bit more how the NATO Information and Documentation Center worked to disseminate information about NATO, its mission. The learning process is much more enjoyable when we, when we do it in a creative way and uh, when we are just open and do it by fun. Both Ukraine and Georgia will uh, join uh, NATO and we stand by this decision. Here in Ukraine, uh, we will host the NATO Parliamentary Assembly session, which is a huge event. Wait, can't yeah. wait. In fact, NATO's activities in Ukraine are also an object for constant propaganda. And uh, according to this uh, uh, gossips, um, uh, Ukraine, uh, if Ukraine enters NATO, it will become uh, a ground for a military training and Ukrainian young people will be taken away to fight for somebody's interest and in this stuff. Uh, but um, uh, despite this is uh, everything like nonsense, uh, still uh, this influences the Ukrainian uh, per uh, perception of NATO and uh, now uh, the, Ukraine, uh, the public support support for Ukraine's accession to NATO uh, is around 54%. So tell us a little bit more how the NATO Information and Documentation Center worked to disseminate information about NATO, its uh, mission, what it's doing and its activities uh, right in Ukraine. Indeed, the NATO Information Documentation Center was established in 1997 and since then we have built up uh, a network of our partners we work closely with and uh, as I say uh, we wouldn't be able to do even 5% of what we are uh, doing not having our great Ukrainian partners and we work with academia, with uh, civil society, with the media, with universities, um, we uh, work with, uh, with government institutions, we also we have several projects with um, MFA or Ministry of, uh, of, of Defense and Ministry of, um, of Interiors. Uh, these are our partners and uh, we just uh, support each other uh, when it comes to uh, informing Ukrainians of uh, what is NATO and what are NATO principles. And for example, as I already mentioned, uh, the lectures I was reading, um, uh, we uh, support uh, various uh, uh, projects and just one we uh, finalized, we finished a great 3D uh, hologram project. Uh, it's, uh, and it, we try to uh, be creative and uh, innovative and use those tools um, IT provides us uh, and uh, that was also just uh, you, we use special uh, special QR code you want uh, and then uh, that was this project we did together with uh, our contact point embassies uh, because uh, every three years um, uh, one of NATO member states or in this case we have now a British embassy and Canadian embassy they support uh, our work and uh, we also organized uh, joint activities and this hologram project was also done together with, uh, together with Ukrainian and British ambassadors, this one project. Then we um, are running, uh, for example, uh, NATO academies. We have Spring Academy and uh, Autumn Academy at which we are using games and uh, um, other uh, interactive uh, tools uh, we uh, explain uh, how, for example, decisions are taken at NATO. And then students also have to um, write an essay uh, on, on, on international on topics that relate to international uh, security. And, uh, for example, in two days we will also award winners of one of such essay competitions. And then, for example, we also uh, have done this year um, a radio marathon. Uh, it's also a project in which, in, 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 an, in a light way, uh, we ask questions about NATO and then we get uh, phone calls in the studio. And uh, this is how we learn, because I think uh, that the learning process is much more enjoyable when we, when we do it in a creative way and uh, when we are just open and do it by fun. Sure. I agree, absolutely agree. And I can't help but ask how difficult it is. In one hand, communicating benefits of joining the NATO 
uh, to Ukrainians. And on the other hand, not promising them the membership, because as far as we all know, there is still a lack of consensus between the allies as for Ukraine uh, to be the part of the NATO family. Yes, uh, Bucharest Summit 2008, uh, we uh, announced that also um, uh, heads of state and government uh, announced that uh, both Ukraine and Georgia will uh, join uh, NATO and we stand by this decision. We stand and it has been also reiterated uh, afterwards. Um, and what is important is that uh, Ukraine continues. Uh, with its uh, reform incentives and with its uh, reform efforts. And uh, it has nothing, there has nothing been uh, better than NATO. And that's why it's very easy to uh, talk about and advocate for uh, NATO's principles and values because nothing can replace uh, democracy, the rule of law and uh, freedom, freedom of speech. Um, and uh, these are the values uh, uh, we share with uh, Ukraine, and that's why NATO Information and Documentation Center is here, NATO Liaison Office, NATO representation in Ukraine, because uh, we help uh, Ukraine, we support Ukraine in its um, uh, reform efforts. And uh, sometimes I'm asked, um, okay, yeah, uh, standards, so uh, Ukraine has implemented so many standards. But it's also equally important is how uh, the rule of uh, law is ensured and also democratic uh, oversight uh, and parliamentary oversight over uh, security and uh, defense sector is also important. Because when uh, Latvia uh, was uh, on the path um, to join uh, NATO, because um, I'm from Latvia and I can, it's also my experience, uh, and other Baltic countries, uh, Estonia and Lithuania, uh, we had to go through um, a solid and um, a solid uh, reform process. And we were very determined. And I remember at that time I was working as the Minister of Defense and I know how much effort and how focused we were to uh, complete uh, our reforms and to show that uh, we are um, we, that we are ready, we are prepared, and that uh, we are ready to take uh, on uh, our commitments uh, as um, a NATO member state. So the reforms is the only thing that we uh, lack to become a part of NATO. And for example, Putin's demands of uh, this uh, non-enlargement eastward means nothing to NATO members. Um, you also asked uh, regarding consensus. Yes, uh, all uh, decisions at NATO are consensus-based and uh, for an um, aspiring country uh, to become a NATO member, consensus is needed. You asked about uh, Putin's set red lines and I will just uh, reiterate uh, what Secretary General has said that uh, we are not going to revert or go back to the past when uh, there were red lines. It's uh, just up to uh, a certain to a aspiring country and uh, NATO member states uh, to decide who, um, who, who will join uh, the alliance. And uh, there can't be set red lines by, by third party. And uh, each, uh, each state has uh, rights to, to, to choose its own uh, secure, uh, security uh, arrangements and to decide uh, what organization uh, a particular country would like to join. Thank you. Uh, you already mentioned about the Strategic Communications Partnership Roadmap and you already mentioned what this is about in this interview, but what are the interim results of this document between Ukraine and NATO? Uh, the uh, roadmap is um, a very good instrument uh, which has been actively used by uh, Ukrainian uh, state institutions, government organizations and uh, by also NATO. And within uh, the roadmap, for example, we have run uh, various uh, capacity building uh, projects. Just a uh, couple months ago, uh, we organized for uh, security and defense sector institutions 
training on how to communicate uh, with audiences, how to write strategic, how to develop strategic um, uh, communications, uh, communication strategy, uh, how to reach out, how to build up a message, and how to build up uh, a narrative. Uh, this is one thing. Then also um, we have uh, that is a letter of intent uh, between uh, Riga uh, Stratcom Center of Excellence and Ukraine, uh, because Riga Stratcom uh, Center of Excellence has uh, become a hub of uh, expertise when it comes to Stratcom. And the uh, center also does awesome uh, analytics. And this is also one of the things we engage with Ukrainians and help to uh, build or strengthen, uh, strengthen uh, communications uh, capability. Because it's very important that uh, Ukrainian government um, and state institutions are talking um, that message are coordinated and uh, that helps Ukraine uh, tell its own story and that helps Ukraine uh, this, that the story uh, Ukraine tells is heard. And uh, in this case, uh, each institution, government organization should um, like reinforce uh, because uh, common joint effort is uh, very needed. And uh, if we, uh, for example, if Ukraine is strong um, at its uh, STRATCOM uh, capabilities and uh, is also united when it comes to messaging, then, uh, then yeah, the international audience hears it. Your office often turns into the art gallery, being a home to many art exhibitions. That's wonderful, that's what we, what we witnessed today, <laughs> and that looks uh, really brilliant. Uh, I may assume that a kind of cultural diplomacy is a part of NATO's soft power in Ukraine. So how to combine culture and art with politics to strengthen uh, friendly ties between NATO and Ukraine? Uh. Arts and cultural diplomacy um, has always been part of uh, NATO, NATO, I would say, image and also NATO's mission. And um, when you travel to Brussels and visit uh, NATO HQ, you can see at the entrance to the uh, main building, you can see a few artifacts. For example, uh, there are two uh, segments of the Berlin Wall. Uh, and there is also a steel beam from uh, the um, first um, World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. I think it's from the 107th floor. The steel beam that also um, symbolizes or tells the story how a NATO uh, has been also has been uh, is dealing or has been engaged in fighting terrorism. And uh, uh, this. Uh, Art has always been a part of our mission, also here uh, at the NATO Information Documentation Center. And when in 2018 we moved to uh, our new office premise, uh, we looked at the walls and thought, uh, yeah, we can use our walls <laughs> for, uh, for offering uh, to Ukrainian artists uh, exhibit uh, their arts and also paintings. And today you were also a witness of the fact that um, we were changing or setting up um, a new exhibition we will open in, in, in a couple of days. And um, I will also go back to uh, the uh, NATO uh, headquarters building. Uh, it's also it's a beautiful, uh, there is a central part, which is glass building, if you have been, you have seen. And it's a, a, it's, it's a nice place where people just uh, bump into each other and can also um, say hello. And uh, in pre-COVID times, uh, we even uh, held their concerts. And uh, also, we on a, on, on, on a regular basis, we also uh, host uh, exhibitions. Uh, I think uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, a nice, uh, it's a nice touch and it's a nice thing uh, what we can do is that we can also offer our walls uh, for promoting Ukrainian artists. Great initiative. Fantastic. Uh, the year of 2021 is almost coming to an end. Uh, are there any plans, projects or initiatives that Ukraine and NATO that you can announce for the, the coming year of 2022? 
uh, NATO Public Diplomacy Division offers small grants, uh, offers them to uh, Ukrainian uh, non-governmental sector organizations, NGOs and civil society. And these small grants um, are meant to uh, promote uh, NATO-Ukraine cooperation, also to inform uh, by using various uh, means uh, to inform and increase Ukrainians' awareness of their lines. And uh, this is one aspect how we, what, what we do. And uh, very shortly we will announce uh, the next call for uh, project proposals. That's why I invite uh, everyone who listens to us uh, to submit their proposals and we are looking for um, creative and innovative ideas uh, and these projects then we will implement uh, next year. Uh, but uh, I can already mention two uh, bigger events which um, will take place next year. One is NATO Tide Hackathon. Uh, it's also um, it's related uh, with uh, IT and communications um, sector. And the other thing is, is that uh, here in Ukraine uh, we will host a NATO parliamentary assembly session, which is a huge event. Wait, can't yeah. wait. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but definitely next year uh, we will have brilliant, uh, very interesting and engaging projects. That's why. Please follow us on our Facebook, Instagram and Twitter accounts. <laughs> Very promising. So we invite you to follow all the Facebook and Instagram pages of uh, NATO Information Documentation Center for sure. They're going to appear somewhere here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before we come into an end, we would like to ask you a traditional question of Kyiv not Kyiv. What should the viewers of Kyiv not Kyiv keep in mind after they see the interview with uh, Ms. Vineta Klein? They should remember that uh, NATO is here to support Ukrainians and that we um, support Ukraine both politically and practically. Then uh, another thing what I wish to all our viewers is uh, uh, may uh, the next year is uh, bright, may the next year is uh, creative and that you use uh, all your opportunities and whatever life brings <laughs> to you, just uh, use a chance and uh, yeah, and make do a lemonade. and make <laughs> yeah, and make things happen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this interview. This was a great pleasure for me, for Petyana, I think, and for all the viewers of Kiev, not Kiev. Uh, yes, today we enjoyed the company of Ms. Vineta Kleine, Director of NATO Information and Documentation Center in Ukraine. Uh, stay safe, stay kind, remember Kyiv, not Kyiv. Ukraine will be a part of NATO. So. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week from Ukraine with love. <laughs>